just a kind reminder because so many of us are, are working from home and, and it's not the offices we normally do. If you can mute yourself when not speaking. And also I'll be turning my camera off as soon as I pass it on to Ellen. Um, hi everybody, my name is Colleen Sorts. I am the Freshwater Watch Task Lead for ABCG, the Africa Biodiversity Collaborative Group. If you're joining today's webinar, hopefully you are familiar with ABCG. It's a consortium of seven conservation organizations that work in Africa looking to advance um, issues and bring solutions to challenges um, for, a place, for places we feel very passionate about. Um, today, um, we'd like to get started by finding out who you are and where you're joining us from. So in the chat, if you could type your name, your organization, and where you might be connecting from. Like Ellen said, you, you're welcome to say from my kitchen, you're welcome to say from Nairobi, you're welcome to say from um, wherever you are, just so we have a sense of who we're talking to and whether or not we should be saying good afternoon or good morning. Um, we hope for many of you it's good afternoon because today's event is really targeted at those working in Africa. Um, as I had mentioned before, I lead the Freshwater Wash Task under ABCG, where we have been focusing heavily on looking at how to make this integrated approach function and learn lessons from pilot sites in South Africa, led by Conservation South Africa, CI's local affiliate, and by the Jane Goodall Institute in Uganda. Um, there's a body of work on ABCG that shares our lessons, experiences, and tools, but most recently, we have worked with IRC, where Alan is joining us from today, to bring a stronger element looking at advocacy. How can we bring change to policy planning or financing that can help enable integration. Working with IRC, we produced a methodology for a workshop to produce an advocacy strategy, which both of those teams put into practice. I'll share a link to the guide in just a second. And our team spent a year in the field implementing their advocacy strategies, and we produced a lessons learned document, which we launched recently. Perhaps some of you even joined us for that webinar. I'll also put a link to that document. It's really useful for understanding how the methodology is put into, play, put into use. Um, since then, uh, the reality of, of COVID and advocacy has dawned on us that it doesn't stop and that there's still continued both opportunities and challenges that our implementers have been forced to meet. So with that, we've put our heads together with IRC to create what we're calling a blended learning course, which draws on both the ABCG methodology as well as the IRC WASH System Strengthening Academy to pull the best from both tools and create a virtual experience to learn and add or strengthen advocacy efforts within your work. So with that, I'm actually gonna pass the webinar over to our amazing partner and advocacy guru, Ellen Walter. Ellen, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna pass post those links right now. Great, thanks, Colleen. So really excited to see you all today. Um, we have um, a, a very interactive webinar um, to just give you a taste of what's going to be in the course, as well as provide an overview of um, what will contain what the course will contain um, and how you can learn more. So um, so the webinar today um, is is interactive. We're going to be using Mentimeter and I'll provide all of the links and codes um, for you to join. You can do that from your computer or you can do that from a phone, um, whichever you prefer. Um, we're going to start. So so for the objectives for today, um, we want to introduce you um, to advocacy and advocacy strategies, provide an overview of the blended learning course, and most importantly, we want you to have fun. So if you will go to menti.com, I'm going to, and the code um, is 9081851. And I'm going to start, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here, and you're going to answer the question in Mentimeter. If for some reason you can't use Mentimeter, please feel free to, um, to use the chat 
Um, and we're going to be answering the question, what words do you associate with advocacy? So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and share a different screen. Um, one second. Oops. And why Alan's navigating, just a reminder, it's Menti www.menti.com, and I will ask Ellen right as she switches over if it's not displayed on the screen to give us that code one more it, time. Yeah, so the code will be now displayed again on the screen, and I will tell it to you one more time. It's 908-18517. So we'll give you a minute. Please enter any any words that you associate with advocacy or influencing um, anything that comes to mind. Again, you can write things in the chat and Colleen, if you can just keep an eye on the chat, if there's any words that people want to mention there, if Mentimeter isn't something that um, is accessible to you or you're finding it difficult to use. Oh, the great local voices, government, uh, promoting change, change in general. It looks like we've got a couple of um, people talking about change. Um, there are two really interesting questions I like to associate when I'm thinking about advocacy. What is the change you want to see and who has the power to make that change? And advocacy you can use as an approach to make that happen. So we'll give it another minute here um, and then we'll move on to the next question. And as Ellen mentioned, if you're having any minty trouble and you'd like us to, to add it in, you can also put those words in the chat. Great. So we're gonna move on to the next question just due to time. So the next one, um, is which of these advocacy approaches have you used? So have you been involved in any campaigns, meetings with government officials, writing a policy brief, um, or potentially even writing policy, lobbying parliamentarians, or maybe building a grassroots movement? Those are all examples of advocacy approaches. So if you've used any of them, if you haven't used any, that's okay. We'll give you a minute to respond. Again, you can type in the chat if there's other approaches maybe that you've used. Or if you've used more than one and Minty isn't allowing you to put them in, you can also add those into the chat. Yes. All right, well, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here and um, go back to the presentation um, and see if we've got... Um, so, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a definition of advocacy. There's lots of definitions out there, but advocacy is the practical use of knowledge for purposes of social change. So we're seeing a bunch of the words that you put in here um, directed to government. Again, we're seeing words that you've put in to government policies, laws, and procedures. And what's interesting about advocacy is that it's often seeks, you want it to seek change that is evidence-based. So you wanna use all of the good work that you're doing as evidence um, to drive messaging and other things for advocacy to really influence those um, in power to increase the impact of the work that you're doing. It's often a deliberate process. 
So you want to plan for advocacy just like you would any of your programmatic work. Um, and it aims to inform and influence decision makers. So this is um, the advocacy strategy roadmap. Um, and you'll see this again towards the end, but this is a key component of um, what the course will be based on. So step one talks about the advocacy issue and the root causes and creating that evidence base um, or identifying what evidence already exists. Step two um, talks about goals and objectives. Step three um, identifies the decision makers and the influencers, so those that you'll be targeting for your advocacy. Step four is around oppositions and obstacles. So who's standing in your way, who might be opposed, and how you can get around that. Step five talks about this, the advocacy strengths, limitations, and partnerships. The strengths and limitations um, look internal um, at your um, individuals within your organization, as well as partners that um, you could um, work with to achieve your advocacy. The step six um, is around advocacy approaches and activities. Step seven um, is around crafting advocacy messages. And step eight is um, about how do you adapt and measure your progress along the way to know that what you're doing for your advocacy is actually working. So steps one and step two are really about what, what is it that change, what is that change you want to see, as I said before, Steps three, four, and five are really about who, who has the power to make that change, um, who can you partner with, who can you influence. Step six and step seven are about how, how you will make that happen. And step eight allows you to learn and adapt along the way. So these are the, this is um, kind of repetition, but these are the different parts that we just talked about of that advocacy strategy. So now we're gonna go to another point of advocacy, which is um, partnerships. So the question we're asking is, what is the most important reason to partner related to advocacy? And so you're gonna go back to menti.com. It's a different code um, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, but that I'll bring it back up one more time. So, um, just one second, I'm going to toggle between screens here. Um, and again, that code is eight five five. Um, nine one four nine nine and need to get back to sharing my screen. Sorry, it's hard sometimes to toggle in between. I apologize for this slight delay. Nope. I'm gonna stop sharing that <laughs> and go to the actual screen that I want you to see, which is here. So We've already got some people who are doing some voting. So what is the most important reason to partner in advocacy? It brings a common voice to the issue. Um, it helps fill in organization's gaps. It brings together diverse actors. Um, it allows for bringing in additional expertise, skills, and resources, and demonstrates wide support for the issue. So I'll give it another minute for you to vote. So the reality, um, it looks like we're, we're kind of done with voting. The reality is that it's all of the above. All of these things are important reasons to partner in advocacy. And then on to the next question here, which um, we just want your input. So what are qualities of an effective partner? What do you think makes a partner effective? And again, you can add these things in the chat. Um, or you can um, type them here into Mentimeter. And since we have a small group, um, as you're doing that, if someone wants to unmute themselves and just share verbally, that's also great. So if anybody 
has anything, feel free to unmute yourself or even raise your hand. And maybe Colleen, you can call on people if anyone has anything they want to add. Yeah, Casper Open communication. Added, yeah, go Casper ahead. Casper added shared values in the chat, which I strongly agree belongs up there. Yes. Mutual respect I'm seeing here. Honest, dependable, hardworking. Um, and again, continue to type in the chat or if anyone has um, um, would like to say something, feel free. We've got a quiet group today. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and go back to the presentation. All right, so. So there are multiple types of collaboration, information and data sharing, developing common messages, mutual consultation, joint planning and strategizing, coalitions and alliances. And these are all types of things that we're going to talk about during the course. This is why I'm giving you kind of these, these little pieces that might be interesting to get you excited about participating and learning more in the course. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to messaging. Um, and um, for messaging, again, we're going, um, I'm, we're going to skip Mentimeter for now because I feel like um, we can just do this in the chat. So instead of going to Mentimeter, I want you to type in the chat, what is the most compelling message that you ever heard? So what message do you, you know, it could have been part of a campaign, it could have been something that was individual, um, that what that you heard a policymaker say one time, but what would you say is that most compelling message um, that you've ever heard? So just type type in the chat what that compelling message was. School strike for climate. That's great. Yeah. A very powerful and to the point message. Great. People need nature to thrive. Nice. Short and to the point. Very good. So continue to type those messages. Um, and then we're going to move on. So qualities of a compelling message, which I think these two examples that we had show, you're, they're brief, they're focused, um, solution oriented. Um, they have a clear request. So there's lots of things that you'll learn during the course about messaging. So we're gonna skip now to the course itself. As Colleen mentioned in the beginning, the purpose of the course is to really increase that impact um, that individuals working on wash and ecosystems have um, the impact that they have by adding advocacy to their programmatic work or maybe even strengthening existing advocacy work. So maybe um, you're already engaged in advocacy, but you're really interested in building your capacity even more. Um, again, as Colleen mentioned in the beginning, um, the course builds on previous work of ABCG, Conservation International, and IRC. Um, and it's based on the links that um, Colleen put in the chat in the beginning. Um, the Freshwater, and Co uh, Freshwater Conservation and Wash Advocacy Strategy Workshop Facilitator's Guide. It's a very, that's a mouthful, but it's basically um, it's a strategy and a methodology that you can use to increase the amount of advocacy that you're doing or to start advocacy within um, your programs. The other is the WASH Systems Academy course, which is on advocating for universal WASH services. And that course, um, again, is, to des is designed to provide an introduction to advocacy 
and an overview of how to get started. So there's lots of similarities between the two um, different approaches and, and content that we'll be using for the blended course. Um, so the blended learning course provides facilitated virtual instruction, self-guided activities, group discussions, and feedback. The course will be three weeks um, and it will happen in September. Um, and I apologize, I forgot to bullet and put in the dates. So Colleen, if you can put the dates in the chat, that would be great. But it's three weeks um, of live lab, um, live sessions, lab sessions, and self-guided sessions. Um, the course will be from the 13th to the 30th of September. It's a maximum of two hours a day that we're asking you to contribute, and we're trying to accommodate um, times that would work for um, people located um, within um, Africa. It follows the strategy development process that we laid out before. And just to let you know that space is limited, we're starting off this particular session of the course with a maximum of 15 participants so that we can have really good interaction that during the labs, you're able to provide peer interaction and feedback to one another. And that the live sessions really provide that opportunity um, for um, small group discussions and other interaction. Um, and so, um, we are hoping um, with um, feedback from the initial course participants that this is something that maybe we'll be able to continue on going forward, um, but we hope that you might be able um, and interested to join. Um, so again, it follows along the eight steps of the advocacy strategy roadmap, the course does. Um, um, but what we're doing is um, this course has been um, given in person only in the past. Um, and so we are transitioning and recreating um, this to be this blended learning online or virtual um, interactive course. And so we're excited um, to be developing that and adapting um, the existing materials to incorporate all of the key components, including things like um, videos and podcasts, and um, interactive activities that will allow um, for a really um, hands-on, as much as you can do hands-on in a virtual setting um, course. So who should um, apply to participate in the course? So we know that advocacy is beneficial for anyone that's implementing ecosystems and wash work, but the course is really designed for people who um, have interest in advocacy and influencing. We want we want you to be excited about the course and the material. Um, has an experience or maybe a project that's past or present that they can use as a basis for the course. Um, it's important that you have kind of a direction that you're going um, so that you know um, that you're not just learning um, about how to do advocacy, but that you're able to apply everything that you're learning, not only during the course, but after the course. Um, we're hoping that someone will have at least the basic understanding of the local political environment, the policy gaps and the power structures, or can um, uh, tap into uh, others within their organization that may have that um, experience and understanding. Um, the ability to apply the learning to their work, which really links with the second bullet that you that you, we want this to be as practical as possible. Um, and we want you to learn um, and, and build on maybe previous advocacy skills, but in a practical um, setting. Um, it is important that um, whoever is um, doing this course has dedicated time to participate in all aspects of the course. Um, some of them are, um, as we said, live sessions. Some of them are um, self-guided sessions that are through the Wash Systems Academy that can happen at any point in time um, throughout the course, you know, as um, so whatever time is convenient. Um, and then there are um, uh, labs in which you'll have the opportunity to interact with and provide feedback and present on what you've been doing in the course. Um, 
it's important that there's support from organizational leadership and or your supervisor um, that because again that apply that links to um, the second bullet um, that you're and the bullet about having to apply the learning. And then it's important that you have um, English proficient, um, the, the people applying have English proficient, proficiency, sorry. Um, all of the course um, will be conducted in English. And so it's important that, um, uh, that English proficiency or the ability to actively participate in English um, is, is a criteria. So um, please put in the chat any questions that you have, um, we've got about a minute or two before um, our webinar is over, but um, we just, we hope this gives you a little taste um, and um, gets you excited about um, applying and expressing interest in the course. Um, if you have any questions um, about anything that's been presented, please enter that, type that in the, in the chat. Um, and, I'm just gonna go to the final slide here. Um, so thank you very much for attending. Um, the link to, um, sorry, that's supposed to be an expression of interest um, will be sent um, with the, the follow-up to this webinar along with the recording and the presentation. Um, so when the application is live, as Colleen put in the chat, you'll find a link also in the community of practice. Um, Colleen, anything you wanted to add or anything that I've missed along the way? I just to emphasize to those on the call, you know, please consider if this is an appropriate um, opportunity for you to bring or strengthen advocacy efforts within your work, whether you're looking at it from a, a nature lens or whether you're coming at it more from the wash water side. And if it's not specific um, or targeted to you, or perhaps even additional colleagues, please invite others. We really want a robust and participative co cohort, and we welcome your participation, and we welcome teams of people as well. So if there's three of you that would like to put it to, to work together, that's possible as well. And um, I will drop my email in the chat, um, and I'm sure Ellen can add hers as well. And if you have questions, or you need more detail in order to discuss this with supervisor within your organization about participation, you know, we are here to assist and thank you so much for participating today. Great, thanks Colleen. Um, we can also open up for a minute or two um, for anyone who might just want to ask their question or comment, um, feel free. So the sessions that are the live sessions are facilitated sessions. And so um, they will need to be attended live, but there will be sessions that um, are um, part of the WASH Systems Academy course. And those will um, those are done in the online format. So those are not live sessions. But that's a great question, Tiffany. Thank you. We will, um, so, um, so it is about, um, it's, a, it's, so, it's no more than two hours a day, um, but it's a maximum of 10 hours a week for, for each of the weeks. Um, some of the weeks, some of the sessions are only an hour or maybe an hour and a half. Um, so not all of them, but it's a maximum of two hours, including kind of any preparation that you might need to do or homework or anything like that for the course. Any other questions? Great. Well, I thank you so much for participating today in this kind of promotional webinar trying to get you excited about it. And we will send um, both the recording of this session um, as well as the presentation and a link um, to, the, um, to the expression of interest form 
um, as follow up. So thank you again for participating and we look forward to seeing you um, on the course. Thanks again and take care. And before we drop off, Ellen, I just wanted to mention and we'll, this will be in the community of practice that we'll be doing a variation and expanding on some of these skills at World Water Week, and which is usually in Stockholm, but it's 100% online. And this year you can find ABCG on the 24th of August at World Water Week. Details will be coming through the list and on the community of practice. So thanks everybody and have a blessed day. Thank you. Thanks.